Hi there. Today, I want to talk to you about the solar system. It's going to be kind of a short lesson today because I didn't have a lot of time to plan it. Speaking of planet, the word for planet is planedo, or la planedoi is the word for planets. If you just said planeto, that would mean an eta plano, a small plan. So we have to use D instead of T and make sure to pronounce that clearly. La planedoi. Let's look at some planets as well as the word for the sun here. The, the thing I like about this beginning list is that they're all simply the English word with an O tacked on at the end of it. So they're super easy to remember because of that. There's no transmogrifying that has to be done into an Esperanto form. Venuso is Venus. Venu al Venuso, come to Venus. Marso is Mars. And of all the planets, the one that usually has fictional characters on it in a science fiction novel uh, would be Martians. So I want to point out here the form uh, for using the word Martians uh, would be Marsano. Marso estas plena de Marsano. So just know that's not talking about the health of the ocean. That's talking about the citizens of Mars. Marsano. Jupitero is Jupiter. Saturno is Saturn. Suno is the sun. La suna sistema. If you're specifically talking about the sun as um, that body in the heavens, uh, you need to capitalize suno, usually in scientific uh, situations, just like you'd capitalize uh, the planets. But there are other places where if it's just general idea of like, oh, a sunny smile or something like that, you can just use lowercase suna uh, if you're talking about it like that. Next, we're going to look at a few that have a little more substantial alterations to create their Esperanto forms. Urano is the word for Uranus. And my rule is, if you're going to talk about Uranus in Esperanto, leave us out of it. Notice it's not Uranuso, it's simply Urano. And when it came to Venus, they couldn't shave off the Uso part of it, because Veno is already a form of Veni. So it had to be Venuso, but there's not a we didn't have to add uso at the end of urano, uh, so it simply is urano for Uranus. And then uh, the, all three of these have this in common. The elemental form, uh, the periodic table of elements piece that's named after them, uh, takes this form. It has an I stuck in there right at the end. Uranio is the word for uranium. Similarly, Neptuno uh, is Neptune, and Neptunio is Neptunium. And Plutono is the word for Pluto, and Plutonio is the word for Plutonium. Uh, and of all those Neptune, okay, you take away the E, you put an O there. Uh, so that's not too difficult, but just remember that. Uh, Neptuno, uh, and then Plutono. Note that it's not simply Pluto equals Pluto, it's Plutono. And a cute way to remember this is just think of this phrase. Pluto, no, you're no longer a planet. Pluto, no. Plutono. Okay, because technically they found out that, oh, well, we have to reclassify these planets because while Pluto might be the largest small planet out there, there is one that's more dense. I think Eris is the name of this other dwarf planet somewhere. So they had to reclassify uh, Pluto as a dwarf planet instead of a regular planet. It's fun stuff. I couldn't find the names for these other, like the moons, like Titan and all that stuff. But I figured these are enough words for right now. And let's do the final two planets for today. They are Mercuro for Mercury uh, and Tero for Earth. But let's look at some correlating words that you want to learn alongside them. So Mercuro, that is the word for the god Mercury as well as the planet Mercury. But what about other forms of Mercury uh, that we have in English? Do they translate the same way? No, they don't. So, you know, remember there with uh, uranium, plutonium, you know, all that stuff, you might think, oh, so mercury, the element, the metal that's, you know, liquid at room temperature, that must be mercurio. No, it's not. And so that's where I really want to make it clear, and that's why I pointed out those. Uh, the word for quicksilver is hidrargo, which, if you look at it, uh, just think of hydro for hydro, you know, it's sort of another form of water, just like aqua and hydro. Um, I don't know if it's Greek or Latin roots, but, you know, hydro is water. And then argo, think of argento, silver. So liquid silver. Oh, quicksilver. Okay, so that is the form uh, for the science form of the element is uh, mercury is hydrargo. Then there's a, a few different plants that are called 
mercury. There's dog's mercury and a few other ones. There's a perennial one and a non-perennial one, etc. I don't really care that much about botany. Uh, and you probably won't run into this word very often, uh, but the mercury plant, which looks sort of like a nettle, like a stinging nettle as far as the leaves and the size that it grows, uh, is mercurialo. And this would make you think, oh, this might, you might think is quicksilver, but it's not. So mercurialo is the mercury plant. And then if you think of the English adjective, oh, he's rather mercurial today, that means you're sort of um, unconstant or you're very temperamental. You shift back and forth being happy, sad, you're sort of quick tempered and all that. Uh, so you don't use any form of this. You would just be a little more descriptive, straightforward. Mal constanta is just the opposite of constant in your temperament would be that. Oh, and also I want to point out that with Mercuro, to remember that it refers strictly to the god and the planet and all that, uh, the god Mercury had winged feet. So he would run quickly. He was the messenger of the god. So Kuro is a run. Kuri is to run. So think of the god running there. So you don't go, oh, Mercurio must be the, nah, don't add an E at the end. Just remember the Kuro is all you have to put for Mercury. And Kuro is the run of the winged uh, messenger there. Then finally, we have Terro, which means earth. Uh, and just like we said, Marsano is a Martian. Well, Terrano would be an earthling. But don't use that word unless you're purposely trying to have a stilted, awkward thing. Like, you don't use earthling on a day-to-day -day basis. You'd say a human. Homo is the word for human. You would only use earthling if it was like, oh, a Martian character is saying, hello, earthlings, I will take over the planet now. So if you want to say that, or like a, a Terran in the Terran Empire in the mirror universe of Star Trek, um, they call themselves Terrans instead of humans. So it is a word that specifically points to the fact that you are a citizen of the earth instead of just a normal human. Uh, so that's why we say Terrano. And terreno, I'm including here also because it's a separate root from tero. Um, it's not an N doesn't have a meaning as a suffix. So just terreno means terrain. Uh, but make sure to pronounce clearly because terreno and terrano can sound similar. So that's an earthling. That's terrain or grounds. Like, oh, the ski lodge. Interesting terrain they've built here on this mountain for skiing. That would be terreno. Uh, tero, when it's not uh, capitalized, simply means earth or ground. Another word like that is grundo, means ground or soil itself. And so terro, uh, if you capitalize it, then it's it's referring, oh, you mean the planet earth. Uh, but if you aren't capitalizing it, it just means, oh, you know, maybe earth wares, like pots or things, or ah, uh, um, underneath the earth, subterra is subterranean, that sort of thing. And so, and also you might think, oh, terrain. So subterreno would be subterranean. No, just use taro. That is very common. Um, there's a lot of words that form using taro, uh, so don't use terrain, even though terranian would be the word in English. Um, yeah, so you can look into those yourself. But those are your solar system words. La planedoi kai lasuno. That's what the solar system is comprised of. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.